What's good YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl KD and we are back with a brand new video. In today's video, uh, we're going to be reacting to uh, Netflix's Dahmer. Now, I planned on doing a breakdown video of how I felt about the TV show, you know, what I got from it. But uh, I didn't. I wasn't sure if you guys would like that. So if you guys want that, make sure y'all drop a like and a comment down in the section in the comment section telling me that you want to see something like that um if not then we're just gonna move on uh in today's video i since we're not doing that what we will do is react to 10 things that the Dahmer series got factually right or it's fiction so yeah we're gonna get into that right after this intro let's go push me away painkillers for breakfast i ain't feeling the day i'm fucking geeked up All right, y'all, we are back. We are ready. Let's get to react to 10 things that the Dahmer series got factually right or, fi or wrong. Let's go. Bro, this part of this. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things Dahmer monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, got factually right and I just want to say this series bro brought thought provoking conversation. Like I've had a few debates about it. Um, it's very interesting. If you have not seen it, I don't know if I would recommend you watching it because of how heavy it is. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty heavy. It gets there. It gets there. Wrong. For this list, we're looking at what was fact and what was fiction in Ryan Murphy's Netflix series about the infamous serial killer. Are you watching Dahmer? Let us know in the comments below. I watched it. Kind of said I watched it. How Jeffrey Dahmer was caught. Right. Netflix is limited. I did see that. Jeffrey Dahmer begins with the night a would-be victim survived an encounter with the killer. Mm. Bro, this hurt. This series hurt. On July 22nd, 1991, Tracy Edwards spent hours in Dahmer's apartment in fear, waiting for an opportunity to make his escape. And though the way in mm. which he escaped is depicted differently in the yeah, series, it's not right. Did hit Dahmer and ran I saw Ch uh, Tracy Ed Edwards' um, testimony in court, his actual testimony in court. It was not depicted right at all. Like nothing, almost almost nothing about this was depicted right with him when it comes to his story. And it seems to be that way throughout the um, entire series. Like, they got a lot of things factually wrong. So, yeah. It kind of sucks you getting your story told and it's not told right. I don't know. And out of the apartment. Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he, like, was right there. Tried to grab me, get mm. me back in there. Two police officers. It hurt me. Residence ...to obtain the key to unlock the handcuffs still on one of Jesus. Edwards. Once they found explicit photos documenting some of the murders, Dahmer was apprehended, putting an end to his reign of terror. The After a year. By an individual who claimed he was in the apartment and became engaged in a dispute with the owner of the apartment and uh, left the apartment and called the officers. Number nine. Jesus. Dahmer wore yellow contacts. That part was true. One of the lesser known really? facts about Dahmer was his strange habit of wearing yellow contact lenses. I wonder why that was. Did you sleep the emperors? Oh, yeah. It has something to do with the a movie. Got him in a costume shop. I have my chat up. He to be up. He felt connected to two dark characters in his oh, it was from Return of the Jedi. Got it. It's from Star Wars. Return of the Jedi and the Gemini Killer from The Exorcist 3. In changing Ugh. his appearance to resemble these powerful fictional figures, Dahmer himself felt more powerful and predatory. That I, I actually derives a sort of pleasure from watching. Can we just... Did you like feeling evil? No. Can we just talk about the fact of... Can we just give... The actor who played Dahmer, his props, because he legitimately got every bit of Dahmer right. In the videos that I've seen of actual Dahmer, including this one, he has his mannerisms right, the way he speaks, his cadence, like, um, like it's it was creepy. It was just really creepy, and even down to um all seven all seventeen victims that they well the amount of victims that they did show. 
they got a lot of them right. One thing that they did not get right is that he only unalived one 14-year-old, when in reality he did two. He hurt two 14-year-olds. So that's another thing they got wrong. No, I didn't. But uh, I tried to overcome the thoughts, and it worked for a while, but eventually... I gave in. He repeatedly watched the films Jeez. before he went out to find another victim to bring home, often making them watch the films with him. What are you gonna do? I can't imagine. I cannot imagine what they went through. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna watch a movie. We're gonna take some pictures. And I'll pay you. Oh, that's so creepy. Also testified that while playing The Exorcist 3, Dahmer was chanting and rocking back and forth. It was like a slow slur, like, mm, some of that. I think at the time he was a, a Satanist. Keep on for a period of time. Off and on throughout the ordeal. Number eight, how Ronald Flowers survived. Wrong. Oh, no. That wasn't true. This part hurt me, too. Jesus. Don't worry, I'm not a cop. Another survivor of Dahmer was Ron Flowers, who met him when his car broke down and Dahmer offered to help. He took him to his grandmother's West Allis residence and drugged his coffee. But Dahmer is interrupted when his grandmother sees that something is wrong with the young man. You should take that young man. Dang, this not right, cause grandma came in clutch on this scene. Wait a second, grandma. I will not have to he came in super clutch on this scene. Fine, in my house. He'll be fine, just let him sleep it off, jeez. No. Something is not right here. She is adamant about staying with the unconscious guest, making sure he gets on a bus the next morning. But her actual involvement in saving Flowers from her grandson has never been reported. Like in the series, hmm. Flowers woke up in County General Hospital. Where am I? You OD'd. You're lucky to be alive. But what isn't mentioned is that he was also covered in abrasions and believed he might have been assaulted. Jeez. Testified that he didn't know how he got there, though the series provides a fictional scenario. A guy. Dang, grandma didn't come in clutch in real life. He he must have slipped. That sucks. I was rooting for grandma at this moment. Number seven. Dahmer posed in yearbook photos. Right. How did he get in there? I don't know. Dan, how did you not catch that? See. Sorry, I didn't see him in the photo. We always thought, when me and my fiance watched this, we always thought this part was weird. Like, he just came in, jumped in the photo, and just left. But then at the same time, if you watch his background story, he just really wanted to feel included. He wanted to feel, um, you know, like he was popular. I guess, like, he wanted to feel like people were around him because his family wasn't there for him. So he just kind of swooped in, took the picture, felt included, swooped out. Like, uh, Sad. The Netflix series mainly follows Jeffrey Dahmer as an adult, but a flashback to him in high school shows him sneaking into a yearbook picture for the Honor Society, despite not being a member. Yes, he actually did this, and his face was subsequently blacked out of the photo. Damn. His friend Dahmer, both the graphic novel and its film adaptation, go further into the prank and the other club photos he infiltrated. Excuse me, what do you... Oh, no. What do you... What do you... It's not really necessary. Former classmates have described mm. how his bizarre behavior in school quickly went from entertaining to concerning, given his heavy drinking. Because it was probably uh, creepy. In a, a first period, I believe, history class, and he had a styrofoam. I mean, it was probably creepy. Everybody remembers that one weird kid in their class, like, oh, wait, would be considered weird kid in the class, and everybody's just like, um okay every time they did something crazy it yeah so it's probably why people were concerned after a while like mm. scotch, i believe it was scotch and i remember saying jeff what is that and he threw his head back and he shook it and he said it's my medicine number six it's my medicine Dahmer killed dean vaughn wrong in episode seven glenda cleveland meets dean vaughn a new resident of the oxford apartments sorry i snapped on you you just that so terrible. this character didn't exist. Well, I'm a good guy. Scout's honor. She sees him talking to Dahmer in the hall and is visibly concerned. The series doesn't follow through with his story, but it mm -mm. does point viewers in a certain direction. 
However, Vaughn was really a tenant in the building. Oh, he was. He was found strangled in his upstairs apartment in early May 1991. Dahmer was questioned about the suspicious death before he was arrested, and again when he was eventually caught. Both times he denied knowing him, and no evidence was ever found connecting him to the crime. As of 2022, the murder of Dean Vaughn is still unsolved. Dang. You was talking to him in the That's sad. See, because I was looking up, I was looking up his list of victims, and I always wonder why his name never showed up. And it's because they weren't 100% sure he did it. And now, to this day, his case is still cold. That's really messed up. But then I want to know why the movie, if that's true, and he was never formally charged with the unaliving of Mr. Dean Vaughn, then why was it depicted in the movie that he did it? Like, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he did it, but it doesn't fit his M.O. You know what I mean? Like, it's not fitting his M.O. I don't know. Number five, baptized the same day as John Wayne Gacy's execution. Really? So you've never done construction work before? I thought that was, well, well, I thought that wasn't true. Please don't tell me they finish show this part. The beginning of the final episode doesn't open on Jeffrey Dahmer. But right oh, please don't show the part. Y'all have a clown phobia. Gacy, AKA the killer clown. In the 19th century, I got a clown phobia, y'all young men in Illinois until he was arrested in December 1978. Gacy was the epitome of evil and he was the epitome of 333 victims dog how could you how can you sleep at night knowing this like how can you sleep without being bothered by the spirits of those that I mean you've taken from this world like how I will never understand. I, I will never understand that aspect of all of this. Like, how can you sleep soundly knowing what you've done and and be completely sane enough to go and do it again and add to it? Like, I don't understand. I don't get it. For 14 years, the convicted murderer was on death row at Illinois' Menard Correctional Center. And on May 10th, 1994, Gacy was executed by lethal injection. Mm. John Wayne Gacy was pronounced dead at uh, 1258 uh, a.m. I wonder if that was a coincidence or just like a freak occurrence. In my opinion, he got an easier death than he deserved. But the important thing is that he paid for his crimes with his life. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, Dahmer was being baptized by Minister Roy Ratcliffe. And as it's briefly mentioned in the series, a partial solar eclipse also occurred. Again, a freak accident or an or a coincidence. Two notorious killers is definitely eerie. Uh, it's weird. And I said that when I was watching it, this is weird. It's definitely strange. Thank you. Number four, victim impact statement. Yes, I know that's true. Facts. He don't know the pain. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. This part right here, her poem that she had written, if you have not seen it, I'm not trying to spoil it, but his poem that she, her son's friend wrote for her to read, oh my gosh, it had me in tears, bro. It had me in real tears. I'm just like, it, the one thing I can say this documentary did is it really, really made you feel for each and every part of those victims and their families like wishing that they did not go through what they were getting ready to go through or what they had gone through even though you already know the outcome that they did not make it out like it hurt like it really hurt the loss in the mental state he's put our family in one of the most heartbreaking parts of Jeffrey Dahmer's 1992 trial was hearing the impact statements. After sitting mm. through the details of his crimes, family members of the victims had the opportunity to address the court. As they should have. More harrowing statements came from Rita Isbell. Hers too. Errol Lindsay. The series they hurt. creates the emotionally charged moment with actress Deshaun Barnes, who embodied the palpable pain. She really did. She embodied that. Her performance. Now, I don't want to ever have to see my mother go through this 
again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you. And Dahmer's own statement took a real-life one. That I did what I did, not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. Number three, Glenda Cleveland lived at the no, apartments. She didn't. I read that. Actress Niecy Nash plays the role of Glenda. She did not. She did not live next door to Jeffrey Dahmer. Often overlooked in the Jeffrey Dahmer case. She interacts with him, mostly to complain about the smell and noise coming from his apartment through her vent. I gotta say, that smell is worse than ever. Is it? The real Cleveland actually lived in the building next to the Oxford Apartments. And that's another thing. Niecy Nash, everybody that played a part in this series deserves some type of award. One, just solely for being put through having to reenact something as horrible as what he did. You know, Benisi Nash, um, the young man who plays Jeffrey Dahmer, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I apologize. Uh, and each victim, I'm talking about bodied each um, real life person. I don't want to call it a character or a story because these are real people. They bodied them, like made you really feel for those people, each and every person. And I'm really glad that the main character that played Jeffrey Dahmer got therapy during each, during the season. And I want to say, I think I read somewhere he got it after because playing someone like this requires serious psychological help. Like you having to reenact horrible scenes. So I'm really glad that he seeked help for that. So I just want to put that in there. I just want to. The character is likely a composite of Cleveland and Pamela Bass, the woman who lived across the hall from Dahmer, who mm. possibly unknowingly consumed human meat given to her by her neighbor. Jesus. However, Glenda Cleveland did continuously call Milwaukee police after her daughter, Sandra Smith, and niece, Nicole Childress, told her about a boy they tried to help. Number mm -hmm. two. Milwaukee police officers returned a victim back. Bro, I wanted to fight them about this. I wanted to throw hands with those cops, bro. Piss me off. You're not supposed to do that. Childress found Conorak sent the SOM phone stumbling in the streets, not in the Oxford Apartments hallway as shown in the series. They called the police to help the very young looking boy. He was holding on to me with a really, really strong grip and he was trembling, he was shaking. So I just stayed with him and I was like, I'm gonna get you some help. But when Dahmer came back to his apartment, he convinced officers Joseph Gabrish and John Balsam of course he did. that Synthesom phone was of age and his boyfriend. In the series, Cleveland is at the scene confronting police, trying to tell them that he was a minor. Wait, 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 you, 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 you're just gonna let him take this baby back inside? Ma'am, he's telling me this is where they live, we're gonna take- Oh, you didn't even do your- <sighs> Old this boy is, I'm not finna get mad, y'all. But you ain't even do your due diligence to even go look, ask for ID. You said, okay, he has pictures in his house and he says he's 19. And because he gives the appearance of drunk, Dharma has to be telling the truth. Bro, you did that baby looked young. Even in real life, he looked young and you still gave him back to him. What is wrong with you, bro? Like, um, that whole scene pissed me off, if y'all can tell. Whole scene. From the women, the officers escorted uh. and his incoherent boyfriend back to his apartment. When the police left, Dahmer killed him. He did. This poorly handled ordeal actually happened. After Dahmer's arrest, Gabrish and Balserzak were suspended, but later reinstated. Bro. Continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, mm. make sure you go into your settings and switch on mm -mm. notifications. I'm sorry, I have a really big clown phobia. One, Dahmer always wore his glasses at trial. That was false. Mr. Dahmer, before I impose sentence, I understand you have a statement you'd like to read? Yes, Your Honor. Towards the end of the series, Jeffrey yeah, that was false. on trial for the murders. While the majority of the scenes are accurately recreated, there's one detail that was different. Evan Peters as Dahmer almost always wears the killer's trademark glasses. But the real Dahmer specifically did not wear his glasses throughout most No, he didn't. Time. His reason? He didn't want to look the jury or victims' families in the face. Yes, it's a small inaccuracy in a largely true-to-life series. Lord. However, 
His decision to remove his eyewear is significant because it shows that he was unable to face his crimes. Yeah, he couldn't see. He was blind. Like, he had some sort of blindness. Face what I had done ever. See how thick his glasses is? So you, you have, there comes a point where a person has to has to be accountable for what he's done. Can't go, can't go around making excuses, uh, blaming other people or other things. Did you enjoy this video? It's crazy. No, I didn't. <laughs> it made me mad. It made me mad. All right, y'all, that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, if you guys want me to do a more in-depth thought out video of how I felt about the series, I can definitely do that. Drop that down in the comments below um, and leave a like to let me know that that's what y'all want to do. So it can help us in the algorithm also. But with that being said, I have one announcement. On Saturday, I will be streaming the season two of Chucky's TV show over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash just KD94, popping up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. If you guys want to watch that, head on over to Twitch, hit that follow button, turn on your notification bell so that you guys can be notified when I go live over there and we can watch the TV show and react together live. But with that being said, y'all, make sure y'all leave a like, comment, and subscribe to this video, to this channel if y'all like what y'all saw. And I will see you guys in another video. Peace.